All right, so let's go ahead and dig right into this. So if you do not already have Create React App, go ahead and click the link in the description that I provide to go ahead and follow these instructions to install Create React App. That's what we're gonna use to bootstrap our application. And I'm gonna go ahead and CD into my directory. So I'm gonna go CD doc, and then I believe it's under code, and then toots. And I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna say create hyphen react hyphen app. And then you're gonna name the app. And in this case, we're gonna call it bills, or actually I'll call it, yeah, bills tutorial. And click enter, and it's gonna go ahead and build this initial react app for us. So let this finish and we'll move on. Okay, so that's completed. And I'm gonna go ahead and clear my console and CD into there. So we called it bills tutorial. So CD builds tutorial, now we're inside of the directory and I'm gonna run npm start, which is gonna start up a development server and it's going to pop open a window with the app running on it. And if it doesn't, then you can just manually go to it. So let's see, let this finish really quick. There it is, it popped it open for me. You can see it's on localhost 3000 and let's give it a second to finish initializing, getting all the assets served up while it does that, I'll go ahead and open my uh, console here. And what I'd like to do is actually have the network tab open. And I also like to, oops, let's see if I can remember how to do this. There we go. That's how you have the console and the network tab open at the same time, which is helpful. So as you can see here, here is the initial React application. This is what comes with the Create React app. We want to get rid of that. So before we do that, I'm going to pull open the final project. This is what the project is going to look like when it's finished. I'm not going to go through the code right now. I just want to show you the project structure. So here we have two folders at the top level. We have components and we have context. Inside of components, we have individual components. And inside of each of these folders is a CSS file and the component itself. So Inside of context, we have one piece of context. I wanted to show you this because in a bigger application where we're not doing a tutorial, but like a big application, you will likely see a different folder structure um, where each folder is a domain. For instance, if you have a really big application and you have uh, say authentication, logging it, you may wanna have a folder specifically for auth stuff and you may wanna have a folder specifically for form stuff and you may wanna have a folder specifically for ads and like you you get what i'm saying but for this tutorial and for the purposes of this video we're going to use this folder structure so let's go ahead and open our new directory okay so inside of here if we go to source and i do this in pretty much all of my tutorials so that just so you can wrap your head around react i like to go to the public folder and show exactly what react is doing here you can go into public slash index.html and this is the file that actually gets presented when a user comes to your app. This is actually what everything get, gets bundled into. And you can see here there is a div with the ID of root and the entire app gets injected in between these div tags when you serve it um, or actually when you run npm build. So if I come into my index.js, you can see that we have this react dom.render and we're injecting our top level component, which in this case is app, and we're injecting it into that element I just showed you with the ID of root. And that's what this is doing. So essentially you could come in here, again, I do this in pretty much all of my tutorials. I'm just gonna say port exe root, just to demonstrate if I save it, right now you can see that there is an error, but if I come in here and rename this, port exe root to match, can save it, come in here, you can see it works. I can click inspect and you can see that the ID is port exe root. Cool. So with that being said, let's go ahead and remove all this stuff that we don't need. So in order to remove that, we'll actually close this public folder because that is not what we're gonna be doing development in. We're going to come into the source folder. That's where we're gonna be doing development and we're going to go to the app.js and you can see by default, there's already a function component. It's not class-based. So I'm gonna erase everything in the return statement. And I'm going to actually change this to an arrow function. So const app equals, and then an arrow, because I prefer ES6 syntax. I'm gonna get rid of the logo here because that's that React logo and we're not gonna be using that. 
Now here we have some CSS that was um, styling the page that we just saw. I'm gonna get rid of all of that because we're not gonna be using that in this. And whenever we have function components in React, we just have a simple function and it needs to return JSX. So if I come in here and I say, let's just say div, or actually, let me show you guys something cool that I learned recently. Um, used to, you would say react.fragment. Now you can just literally create two tags with absolutely nothing in it, like this, two empty tags and say like hello world or just put any HTML or JSX inside of this. And it will count as parent tags until it compiles it and then it will not it'll it'll no longer exist in the browser i hope i didn't confuse you there but i'll just show you exactly what i'm talking about so let's go ahead and save this and you can see hello world here if i right click inspect and i look inside of here you can see hello world is directly is a direct child of our port exe root there is no tag around it and that is because we're using empty tags here but you know in uh let's show you in react if i were to say something like let's add a span in here but let's add two spans okay so we have hello and world in two separate spans but let's remove these external tags here so it, we're returning two elements okay you can already see that that's not going to work Let's see what this says over here. It says parsing error adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in an in an enclosing tag. So what this is saying is you cannot return multiple elements. You have to return one. But what you can do is you can wrap all of those elements inside of one and it just counts it as one. OK, so in other words, you can have a parent like a div. So a lot of the times in React, you have to use these empty tags. to group elements together so that you're only returning one element. So that was one thing I wanted to go over really quick. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for going over the basics here. So let's go ahead and continue with our folder structure. Remember, I'm going to create a folder called components, and that's going to be directly inside of source. I'm actually going to move my app.js, actually, inside of components. I'll create a new folder called app. And then I'm going to drag app.js and app.css into there. Yep. And we're not going to be doing testing in this video, so I'm going to delete the test. Okay. So now I'm also going to delete this logo.svg. We don't need that. And we are good to go there. And inside of source, go ahead and create another folder called context. And we won't create that file yet, but we'll get to it shortly. So now we have a semi-working React app that well, looks like it says, okay, so we just moved the file, but we didn't rename, uh, we didn't re-reference it here inside of index.js. So we moved app.js to a new location and inside of index.js, we are still assuming it's in the same directory and it's not. So we need to say slash components slash app slash app, because that is the new location of the file. So when I save that, no errors, we can see hello world. It is exactly how we were expecting it to be, which is great. So let's go ahead and actually delete this because we don't obviously don't we don't want to just return hello world. Let's actually return something relevant. So if we remember in the application, we had a window and inside of that little rectangle, we had all of the contents. Let's go ahead and create that ex, um, outside div and let's give it a class name. So in react, we use class name. We don't use class It's the exact same thing but we have to use class name instead of class. So class name, and we'll give it a, a class name of, I don't know, we'll say um, bills container and we'll save it, okay? And we wanna go ahead and create some CSS for this. So copy bills container, go into app CSS, put a dot because it's a class and then the class name itself. And then inside of here, we're going to put the width, which we're gonna define as 500 pixels and let's do a box uh, shadow. Let's say, I don't know, two pixels, five pixels, 20 pixels gray. And let's do a height of 
750 pixels for now. We're gonna make that auto later. And then let's give it a margin auto. So a margin auto here, since we're defining the width, the margin auto is going to make it centered in the screen. I'll show you what I mean right now. As you can see now, the rectangle here is in the center of the screen horizontally. That is because of margin auto. If we were to remove that, then you would see that it is no longer there. So we want to keep margin auto and we, let's give it a margin top because we don't want it to just be stuck to the very top of the screen. Let's say margin top, 100 pixels. Make sure that you put margin top below margin because margin auto will overwrite this. Right now we're overwriting just the top portion of margin by putting it underneath here. So if we save, we can see that this looks pretty good. So all of the contents of our React app are gonna go inside of this container right here. So one of the things that we're gonna to need to put inside of this container is context. Now this is almost as far as we're gonna be get going in this video, but I wanna explain really quick what context is in the case that you are not familiar with this pattern in React, okay? So typically in our React tutorials, what we were doing was we were using class-based components and inside of those components, we would use state within those components where each component had and managed its own state. Well, when you're using function-based components, it's not, it's not as easy to do that. And also passing data from one component to another is kind of, a, it can become a nightmare when doing that. We would have to use something called component drilling where we would pass um, state as props up and down a tree of components. And it can become a nightmare if you have deeply nested components where you had to pass state like six levels down. It just becomes a nightmare handling all of that and tons of unnecessary code written. So the context API, what that allows us to do is have centralized state. And what that means is we can put our state in one place and in one file, and we can pass that state down to any component that is inside of the provider tags that we provide, which in our case, we're actually gonna put our provider tags in the app.js level. So every single component that we create and build is gonna go inside of these provider tags which means every single component we create will have access to this context or this centralized state where we can um, pass state down and we can use that state inside of components and update state by referencing those props within those components. So don't worry, I know if you're somewhat new to the context API or React in general, that can be very confusing to hear verbally, but we're gonna go through it, so do not worry. I just wanted to take a moment to kind of go through that so you can get ready to um, work with the context API and be somewhat, you know, understand what it is we're gonna be doing and why we're doing it. So it is, in my opinion, a much better pattern to use the context API with hooks and function components than doing class-based components. But it's good to know both ways in case you wanna choose your way. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a few of our components. We're gonna get things started and we're gonna create our context so you can see how everything works together. If you liked this video, please give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.